Hey, welcome back. This is Calc1. Um, looking at some optimization problems now. And let's dive right in. Okay, so the first type we have kind of the area type. Um, you're given, and all these problems are kind of the same. You're, you're given some restriction and you're given something you want to optimize. And basically, you use the restriction to um, reduce the number of variables. Then you take the derivative, find uh, the critical number. And usually that's the answer, okay? The critical number is usually the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. So our example, find the length and width of a rectangle with a given perimeter and maximum area. So find length width of a rectangle given the perimeter is uh, 90, no, actually 80 meters. Okay, so let's draw a little picture here that usually helps call the length x, the width uh, y. So, um, you know, we're trying to optimize, find the length and width of a rectangle given the perimeter is 80 meters, which has maximum area. So we need that bit of information. Okay, so um, we need two formulas. We need the restriction formula and we need the formula we're going to optimize. So um, maximum area, that's kind of telling us the formula we want to optimize is area equals, you know, whatever, x times y. Okay. Then the, uh, the restriction, the given restriction is that the perimeter is 80 meters. So we can write perimeter... Um, is 80. So our perimeter formula, 2x plus 2y um, from geometry, and there we go. Um, so how does this work then? Um, I'm going to reduce the number of variables in the optimization formula with the restriction formula. So you take the restriction and uh, solve for one of the variables. So I'll solve for x. Okay. So 2x equals 80 minus 2y, and therefore x must equal 40 minus y. Okay. Then you take that guy and you plug it back into the formula you want to optimize. Okay. So a will equal 40 minus y times y. And then we're going to take the derivative of that thing. So let's rewrite it as 40y minus y squared. Okay, so a prime is going to be 40 minus 2y. And then find its critical number. So set it equal to 0. And usually that's our answer. Okay. Um, you can literally go in and look at the number line, but you know, nine times out of ten, this is going to be the, the answer. Anyways, uh, to the to the uh, so you get some test values and stuff. So x is maybe like five, forty minus, and I'm using this equation. So uh, forty minus five is positive times positive. It's increasing, and then try x is twenty-two. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, whoops. I should be putting it in the derivative. I apologize. I put it into the original function. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, where is my uh, guy? So I want to put it in this guy here. Sorry. Um, so the first one, I, I get positive anyway. So 40 minus 10, when I plug in 5, that's, that's a positive, so it's going up. 40 minus 44, when I plug in 22, that would be negative. So that's going down. In other words, this is a max. Okay, so this is, in fact, the max that we seek. Um, I found the width. I still need to find the length. So now you just plug uh, that value back into um, a formula that has both x and y in it. So I'll use, I don't know, here's one. Here it is. I want to use this guy to find x. Okay, so x must equal um, 40 minus 20. And that equals 20, so basically this a square. Okay. So um, to optimize the area, um, 
let the length be 20 meters and the width be 20 meters. Okay. Okay, and that's that's it. Um, all these problems are pretty much the same. So what you're doing again is trying to find this this restriction formula and the optimization formula. Use the restriction formula to reduce the variables. The variables in the optimization formula. is right here and then once you put it in there you take the derivative and find the critical number and then do some back subbing. And that's it. Um, that is really it. So uh, the book will try to make it hard on you. For example this next problem um, 21 is about optimizing uh, what they call, I think, a Norman window. So they want to, want you to find the um, x and y value that will optimize the area given uh, some restrictions. Okay, so example then, we have this Norman window. So it's just a rectangle with a uh, with a semicircle on the top. We're going to say this time that uh, the base is length x and the width is length y. Okay. And then um, the restriction is given in the book. They're going to say the total perimeter is 16 feet. Okay. So the perimeter is 16 feet. And they want you to optimize the area. So again, um, this you know uh, this guy is the restriction, and clearly the the other one is the thing we want to optimize. Okay, okay so uh, 16 feet is the perimeter. So 16 equals, and then to find the perimeter, you just add up um, the distance around the object. Uh, one thing to note is that for the top part, you need the circumference of a circle. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Um, here, when we walk around it, uh, so you, you can imagine some little guy here walking about. Uh, when he walks around it, he's only walking on half the, the circle, right? So the um, distance there is just one half the circumference. Uh, what is the R value in this case? The R value is just half um, the, the uh, base's value. So the distance from here to here is x over 2. Okay. So the radius is just x over 2. Okay, so let's put it together. Um, the, the perimeter is y plus x plus y plus 1 half uh, times 2 pi x over 2. Right. So it's but it ends up being x plus 2y's plus um, 1 half the circumference, so that would be pi r, um, and then r is x over 2, so pi times x over 2. Okay. So that's our restriction formula. The optimization formula, the area, um, so the area of the box part is just length times width, but then the area of the semicircle up above well, what is the area of a circle? The circle is pi r squared, so the area of a semicircle would be one half that. So one half pi times r squared, in our case, r is x over 2. Okay, um, so we want to first reduce the number of variables using our restriction formula. Okay, and it seems like it, the easiest thing to do there is to solve for y. Okay, so I'm going to get y all by itself. So 16 minus x minus uh, pi over 2x. Right. All right, uh, divide by 2. So y will equal 8 minus x over 2 minus pi over 4x. And then we can put that into our optimization formula right here. And this is where it starts getting a bit nasty, right? So x... Um, We'll leave that alone, and then times y, which is now 8 minus x over 2, 
minus pi over 4x plus uh, 1 half times pi times x squared over 4 is going to be uh, pi all over 8 times x squared. And then let's clean that up. So x equal, a equals 8x minus x squared over 2 minus pi over 4x squared plus pi over 8 x squared. And then we can combine some like terms here and just need a common denominator. So multiply here by 2 top and bottom. And then I'll have uh, a equals 8x minus x squared over 2. And this will be 2 pi over 8 negative plus pi over 8, which will be minus pi over 8 x squared. <laughs> and then I can finally take the derivative of this character, my uh, optimization formula, and start looking for the critical number. Right. So a prime is going to be 8 minus um, 2x over 2, which will just be x, minus um, 2 pi x over 8, which would be pi over 4 x. Okay, so then we need to set this equal to 0 to get the critical number. Um, so I'll move the x material to the other side. Factor out the x. Divide both sides by that nasty looking thing. I hate complex number, complex fractions, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4. And I get this ugly looking thing, um, which turns out to be the answer in the back of the book. Uh, now I need to get my other, um, other uh, unknown, the y value. So I need to go back to the y equation. Where are you, y? So there's y. So. To make it a little easier, I'm going to rewrite y. Okay. So y is the same as 8. Um, let's see, how can I rewrite this to make it a little easier? So I'll factor out uh, minus, I don't know. Um, let's see. I guess I could go uh, 4 1 fourth. Well, let's just leave this. So x over 2 minus, maybe I should factor out the x as well. Right? So factor out the x out the back door. So you end up with uh, 1 over 2 minus pi over 4. And then you could rewrite that as, uh, by finding a common denominator, it's 8 minus, so times 2 times 2, 2 minus pi all over 4 times x. Okay. So hopefully that, that is correct. Um, I think that's correct. Did I, oh, I factored out a negative, so this would be plus. This would be 2 plus. Uh, I feel like I made a mistake somewhere. Sorry, just one second. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay, so now I'm going to substitute in the uh, x value into here and find my y. So y is 8 minus 2 plus pi over 4 times 32 all over 4 plus pi. Um, that will equal, well, 4 goes in the 32 8 times. So I'll have 8 minus 2 plus, 2 plus pi. Someday my marker will work. 2 plus pi. Um, but there's an 8 involved, right? So it's actually going to be 16 plus 8 pi. Okay, so 16 plus 8 pi all over 4 plus pi. 
And then you could find a common denominator there. So um, multiply top and bottom of the first guy by 4 plus pi. And we get uh, 32 plus 8 pi minus 16 plus 8 pi over the common denominator of 4 plus pi. And so that will be uh, 32 minus 16 is 16. 8 pi minus 8 pi is 0 all over 4 plus pi. And that would be your official state sanctioned answers. So our uh, x would be um, 32 over 4 plus pi feet. And then your y value would be the 16 over 4 plus pi feet. So they can make it a real nightmare. They just throw in some transcendental numbers. Um, unless you're using approximations, it could be pretty nasty. Um, let's look at... Uh, one more with a, a sort of area type issue. This time what they're doing is inscribing a rectangle into a semicircle. Okay, so the restriction is the semicircle. One, two, three, four, five, five, five. So the equation of that upper hemisphere is just y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. And they want you to find the rectangle of largest area okay, ins that's inscribed in this semicircle. Okay. So the area of that rectangle, um, given you know the, the, these uh, coordinates, x and y coordinates, um, the area will be x times y, and the restriction is that y must be equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. And it's not quite x times y, right? Because um, the, the base is actually two x's. So you have to be a little bit careful. This length is two x and then the height is y. So let me, uh, let me fix that a little bit. So the a is equal to actually 2x times y. Okie dokie. So um, what we do then is, you know, we already got the y value, so we can do our, our uh, use our restriction to reduce the number of variables. And a will be 2x times the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then I want to optimize that thing. So take its derivative, a prime. I need a product rule, so uh, 2 square root 25 minus x squared, and then plus 2x times 1 half, so this is a power rule, 25 minus x squared, then a negative 1 half, times a chain rule, 2x. And then we're going to set that guy equal to 0. So I have uh, 2 times the square root of 25 minus x squared minus, it looks like it's going to be 2x squared all over the square root of 25 minus x squared. I'm going to get a common denominator. Um, so pretend this is over 1 and multiply top and bottom by square root 25 minus x squared. Okay, so I'll end up with 2 times 25 minus x squared minus the other numerator all over our common denominator. So this will equal 50 minus 2x squared minus 2x squared is minus 4x squared all over the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then uh, set the numerator equal to 0. The denominator isn't going to give you anything except the, kind of the trivial answers where the, the, the um, base is equal to 5 and then the height is equal to 0. So that won't be a, a true rectangle. So you go to the numerator. And set it equal to zero. So you have 4x squared is 50. x squared is 25 all over 2. And then square root on both sides, x is 5 over root 2. And then uh, your y value is uh, from our restriction equation above. y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. So y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared is 25 over 2. So that will equal the square root, again, of 25 over 2, which is 5 over root 2. OK. 
Okay. But the dimensions of the rectangle are what we are after, and we've not really found that. The, the dimensions have to be 2 times x by y. Okay. So um, the base of our rectangle is actually 2 times x, so 2 times 5 over root 2. So if you prefer, it's 10 over root 2. Or if you prefer, that'll be 5 root 2 all over um, It's just 5 root 2, right? Um, so I would, I would have uh, 10 root 2 over 2, which would be 5 root 2. Okay. And then the height of this rectangle is just the y value. So 5 over root 2, or if you'd rather, 5 root 2 over 2. And I believe we were in feet. Okay. Okay, uh, the next kind of optimization is distance problems. Okay, and there's a clever little trick you can do. In order to optimize the distance formula, it's enough just to optimize the insides of it. Okay, if you find where the insides are a maximum, it will cause the outside, the square root of it, to also be a maximum. Because this, I, I suppose, because it's always increasing. Right? So if you have um, x1 less than x2, then f of x1, which is like taking the square root of it, will still be less than f of x2. Okay? So the, the thing we'll be using to optimize will be this uh, you know, x um, minus x1 uh, squared plus uh, y minus y1 uh, squared thing. Okay? We don't have to use the the square root. We want to avoid it. Okay, so um, number, well, this example, we want to work with this restriction, g of x is square root of x and our point for zero. Um, we want to find the point on the graph of that thing that's closest to four zero. Find point closest closest to um, 4, 0 on g of x. Okay, so visually, what are we talking about? 2, one, two three, four, eight. here's our point four zero. here's g of x looking like that. should hit it, 0, 0. Um, so the question is, you know, what point on this graph is going to be closest to the point four zero? Okay, so maybe, I don't know, maybe it is uh, four two, um, maybe not. Okay, so it could be any of those red dots. Okay, so our uh, formula to optimize then um, this distance thing. Oh, jeez. Is going to be f of x equals, um, you know, x minus, let's make this x1, this is x, y1, x minus uh, 4 squared plus y minus 0 squared. Okay, there's two variables in our optimization formula, but we have this restriction that y equals the square root of x. So we could now uh, use the restriction to reduce the number of variables in the thing we want to optimize. Okay. So we'll have f of x equaling um, x minus 4 squared plus square root of x minus 0 is just square root of x squared. And of course, that will equal um, x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus x. So ultimately, f of x is x squared minus 7x plus 16. Okay. Then we want the critical numbers. So f prime of x is 2x minus 7. Set that equal to 0, so 2x minus 7, and 2x is 7, so x is 7 halves. Okay. We want the both coordinates of the point, so y, going back to the restriction, is equal to the square root of x, so y must equal 
the square root of 7 over 2, um, and that will be our answer. So the point that's closest to the graph, oh, sorry, the point that's closest to 4, 0 on the graph of y equals square root of x is 7 halves kind of, comma square root 7 halves. Okay. So if you thought it was maybe this point here at uh, 4, 2, you would be sadly mistaken. Let's look at one more. Um, this guy is more of an engineering type problem, so I don't do enough applications in my opinion. That's because I'm more of a math person than an engineer type person. Um, so beam strength, uh, so you're maybe a woodworker and you're creating, you have some logs and you need to create some, some uh, boards from it. You could tell the beam strength given uh, this dimension w, the width, the width and the, the height of the board that you're cutting out of the log. Okay? Um, so the formula for beam strength that we want to optimize is s equals some k constant times w times h squared, where the constant of strength is given by the type of wood you're using. Okay. So we want to optimize that. The restriction is that this, this uh, diameter of the log is 20 inches. Okay. So the restriction is 20 inches. So I need this restriction formula, and I could see a formula there, right? It's from the Pythagorean theorem. Basically, w squared plus h squared must equal 20 squared. So that'll become a restriction, and we can use that to reduce the number of variables. Okay. Right, so I'm going to solve that for h squared. That will be the easiest way to do it. You get 20 squared minus w squared. And then you can plop that back into the, the, the optimization formula and reduce the variables. So s equals k times w times 20 squared minus w. Okay. All right, let's expand that a bit so we can take the derivative easier. Lee, uh, 20 squared kw minus uh, kw cubed. So the derivative of s will be um, 20 squared k. So the k is a constant. So um, you just, the constant multiple rule, uh, take the derivative of w, that's just 1. Uh, and then minus k times 3w squared. Let's rewrite it a bit. So I get 20 squared um, k minus 3kw squared. Set it equal to 0. So 0 is 20 squared k minus 3kw squared. Solve for w. So we get 3kw squared equals 20 squared k. You could divide out the 3k. w squared equals... 20 squared over 3, and uh, I mean that's 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 w. That's that's pretty much uh, it. Yeah, well you got to take the square root on both sides. So w is the square root of 20 squared is just 20 all over the square root of 3, and then h h of course is uh, from the restriction formula, ultimately will be 20 squared minus w squared. So it'll be the square root of 20 squared minus 20 squared over w, or sorry, 20 squared over 3. So um, that will end up being 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds 20 squared. And then we can take the square root of that. So you'll get uh, 20 square root 2 all over square root 3. And if you wish, you can rationalize denominators here. So the um, width will be 20 root 3 over 3 inches. And then the height will be um, 20 root 6 over 3 inches. Okay, that's, they're pretty simple. Like I said, it's, it's just going to come down to you identifying the optimization formula and the restriction formula, reduce the number of variables in the optimization formula, then take the derivative, find the critical point, and do back substitution. And that's it. That is literally it. You'll see these problems again in Calc 3. Um, very similar technique, except when you find 
critical numbers, there's basically like two derivatives that you have to work with. And you set each equal to zero, and uh, then that'll give you critical numbers and all that jazz. Okay. Okay, so thanks for watching again. Um, as usual, we'll see you next time.